Hey guys, if you have bought Ark in the last few years, you will surely have wondered why you got a second game with it. Because when you buy it, you not only get Ark, but you also get Ark Survival of the Fittest. But what exactly is the difference? I'll explain it to you. If you like videos like this one, please leave me a like and maybe even a subscription. I mean, we all know Ark Survival Evolved by now because I think all of us are playing it. But what about Ark Survival of the Fittest? What's the big deal about this? It's the year 2015, August 2015 to be exact. The game has just launched into early access on Steam and a new patch introduced the game option Total Conversion. Even though Total Conversions are hardly used nowadays, because it is a real hassle keeping them updated, this was one of the many experiments in Arc to introduce new play experience apart from the normal game and to give modders the chance to completely change Arc. With a total conversion option, a new game mode was introduced, Survival of the Fittest. This was an Arc Battle Royale in which you competed alone or in a team against many enemy players. Taming, farming, crafting, all was made easier. At the time, even bosses could also be tamed and taken into battle. Now fast forward to March 2016. In an attempt to make Ark Survival of the Fittest suitable for eSports, the Total Conversion became a standalone game and was available for free on Steam. This was intended to boost player numbers and also to simplify development by removing the link between Survival of the Fittest and Ark Survival Evolved, the main game. A separate league was created which showed the individual players sorted by team size and ELO. At the end of the month they held a big tournament in which the best players could compete against each other for high cash prizes. But with that the problems started to appear. The appeal of winning money in a game that was not yet finished or optimized was a cause of many small scandals within the survival league. The ELO system also turned out to be not suitable as losses were punished too harshly. It was easier to stream snipe a streamer with a high elo and therefore to be ranked above him than to win honestly. So many monthly tournaments were in the end played by cheaters against cheaters just for the money. There was no matching system because the player base was simply too small for that. So beginners were thrown into a game with pros and quickly lost interest if the pros killed them too quickly. The player base dropped very quickly from almost 4000 active players to less than a thousand. Because the game was free, it was also difficult to take action against cheaters and hackers. Some cheaters at the time had 30 to 40 smurf accounts and servers were also regularly DDoSed. Only six months later, Studio Wildcard stopped all development. Officially because they wanted to focus on the main game. However, unofficially SOTF only cost money and they had hardly any staff to manage another game that would have needed so much support and moderation. The last patches were developed by devs in their spare time and the game simply cannot be maintained on such a foundation. Since 2016 there have been several attempts to bring SOTF back to life under the hand of modders. And you could almost set an alarm for a new project to pop up every few months. But none of them really succeeded. The last SOTF project failed in mid-August this year when the organizers did not pay the development studio that had been working on the mod. Based on the echo that came out of that, I cannot envision anything coming out from that ever again. SOTF has still a few official servers running at present and about 20 to 30 active players who sometimes manage to meet each other in the lobby at the same time. The only reasonable way to play SOTF today is to set up an own server for your community. This is tricky though because you have a year 2015 or 2016 old arc with still the old UI and the old security vulnerabilities, most server hosts do not support that. As you can see, this is a Battle Royale game that was presented as a showcase to present the new Total Conversion feature. It was the proof that anyone could make ARK into whatever they wanted it to be by providing a Total Conversion. However, since Wildcard has for the most part abandoned the concept of Total Conversions, there is no real reason to continue running SOTF as a loss-making business. But what happened to the former SOTF players? Some players who played SOTF were no particular interested in ARK as a survival game and then turned to other Battle Royale games. So Skoom, Momen, Haze and Hollywood were signed together as a PUBG team by Team Liquid. Other players switched to ARK PvP and now stream this on Twitch. 
However, many have moved on to completely different games and careers after. After survival of the fittest, many battle royale games came along that did it better. Balancing, moderation, bans, game mechanics were so catchy that even inexperienced players could gain an understanding of the game. Together with matchmaking and a ranking system, these were successful concepts. This may also be the reason why the many attempts to revive SOTF did not work. People glorified the time when the biggest competition was only H1Z1 or maybe Arma Battle Royale, the latter also not very accessible but still popular. SOTF never had a huge support within the core dev team and was rather a side project of a few who were willing to put more time into the game. And if we're looking on how full the devs hand are with Arc 1 and Arc 2 right now, it's probably unlikely that this mode will ever be taken up again. Other projects, just as Primitive Plus for example, would have deserved it a little bit more. Whether or not SOTF is worth trying out is of course up to you. However, today is a little bit of a ghost town without laws and you have to bring your own opponents. Although many see it as a shame, I think SOTF has been very idolized despite the flaws and problems. In today's landscape with all the battle royales around that exist right now, it would be a real struggle to keep up. Arc Survival Evolved and Arc 2 are getting the full attention of the developers at the moment and Arc 2 is expected to be released next year. It is questionable whether the topic of Arc Battle Royale will be on the agenda again by then, but the team would have then to expand immensely in order to do justice to a moderation intensive game like a Battle Royale game. Now you know what the extra game in your library is all about. It's probably not really worth getting into this mode anymore unless you make your own server and you have a large circle of friends or a community to play with that can fill a lobby. But what do you think? Do you think an ARC Battle Royale could have ever caught on? And what do you think should have been done better in the implementation of SOTF? Do you play Battle Royales at all or do you just try to avoid them? Feel free to let me know in the comments and otherwise. Thank you for watching the video and I hope I see you in the next video. Have a good one. Bye. So ich habe ein Problem. Geht jetzt auf den anderen. Would be totally fine. Ich habe auch nichts mehr zu trinken, gar nichts mehr. Oh, stimmt, ich kann da Bären sammeln. Ich glaube, der hat mich gesehen. Okay. Mädels. Seid ihr bereit? Ich glaube, das wird jetzt interessant. Der Typ ist auf dem Vogel. Ich hab gewonnen! Oh mein Gott! Was hat er gemacht? Er ist von einem Mammut ge... Sie! Ich habe gewonnen, ohne jemanden getötet zu haben. Ach nee, ich habe am Anfang jemanden getötet, aber... Easy.